So the other day I posted this crazy like over edited like before and after video for Central C and it went absolutely viral on Instagram. I'm not in a mood cause my flight delayed. So I jumped on a private jet and I'm asking a pilot at ETA. Lambo parked on a landing strip, everyone in my gang and my DJ paid. Why is my man talking about inshallah? These times he don't even pray. Why is my man wearing a Jesus piece? How did she squeeze in them jeans? Big behind a petite waist. Take time with a GBG, we don't beef nobody like GB. If you're new here, my name is Brian Delmada and I make educational content for millions of creators online, just like yourself. So take a second and make sure you're subscribed. That way you don't miss out on future videos. And if you wanna save time while editing, check out my amazing editing packs, presets, and plugins. And if you're a creator looking to grow your personal brand, sell digital products and make passive income all while doing it, check out Creator Pass. It's my community and course where I teach all of that. I'll have the links in the description, but let's get into the video. So in After Effects, this is the final result I came up with. I'm not in a mood cause my flight delayed. So I jumped on a private jet and I'm asking a pilot at ETA Lambo parked on a landing strip, everyone in my gang and my DJ paid Why is my man talking about inshallah, these times he don't even pray Why is my man wearing a Jesus piece? How did she squeeze in them jeans? Big behind a petite waist Take time with a GBG, we don't beef nobody like GB I'm not so you can see it's that crazy kind of over edited style, a lot of like twirling motion shakes going on, but it went viral on Instagram. So I figured I'd break it down, show you how to do everything. That way you can take little bits and pieces and implement it into your workflow. And just to give you a point of reference, this is what like the music video looked like before. I'm not in a mood cause my flight delayed. So I jumped on a private jet and I'm asking a pilot at ETA. Lambo parked on a landing strip, everyone in my gang and my DJ paid. Why is my man talking about inshallah? These times he don't even pray. Why is my man wearing a Jesus piece? How did she squeeze in them jeans? Big behind a petite waist. Take time with a GBG, we don't beef nobody like GB. I'm not so still a super solid music video. I probably wouldn't even like if I was editing a real music video, include all the effects that I did in that, that before and after for Instagram. But because I knew it was like for short form content, I wanted to make it crazy and like really stand out. So that's what I did. But I'd recommend if you're doing it in a music video, just take bits and pieces, implement it throughout and don't go like that crazy unless you really want to because I'm not stopping you. I'm just saying like, that's probably what I personally wouldn't do in an actual music video. Okay, I'm gonna mute this so we don't have to listen to the song over and over again. And the first thing I'm gonna break down is this slide effect. I'm gonna show you how to do it with no presets, all native in After Effects, no plugins, no nothing. And then I'm gonna show you how to do it with presets and then just different ways to save time and like do it consistently throughout your video. So you can see the super clean slide effect. I love this one. It's one of my most popular tutorials on the channel is how to do an effect similar to this, but I've got some more sauce recently to kind of level it up, show how to do more of it. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. So getting started, I actually rotoscoped out Central C here. You can see it's rotoscoped out. And if you're not familiar how to rotoscope or like want some more tips and tricks on how to do it, I have a video up here and I'll link it down in the description. That way you can follow along and, and really get the in-depth tutorial. But for the sake of this like tutorial, I'm not gonna show how to rotoscope from start to finish. It is this tool up here and it's pretty simple. So you could probably figure it out, but if you want a little bit more of a breakdown, check out that video. So we now have the rotoscoped out layer and then just the normal footage layer. So this is like the clip as it was and we just cut it for the duration. So on top, if I turn this layer on, it is just central scene. So on that bottom layer, we need to go up to effects and presets and add on an effect called motion tile. And then we're gonna click mirror edges and change the output width and height to around 500. And now if you like press S on your keyboard and just, just to show you what it did, you can see it kind of like if you scale out, you can see what it does. It basically makes a bunch of duplicates of this. And this is gonna be pretty intensive on your computer. So around this time, I would recommend going to like a quarter. That way we can like preview the effect and like get it done. And then when you're done and want to actually render it, you can go through and do that. The next effect we're gonna be adding on is transform. And then just drag that underneath motion tile. And at the beginning, we're gonna key from the position and maybe also the scale. And then we can just go to right around the end. It doesn't have to be the end right now. We'll tweak the keyframes in a second. You can drag either the X position or the Y position to have it like either go up or down. Let's go ahead and make it go to the right. So we, what we need to do is drag it. You can see it's mirrored here, so we don't wanna end it here, but maybe we can end it on this one right here. You can see it's almost in place at 4,799, but that just means it needs to be at 4,800 and it'll lock in place. You can see we kind of have that, that effect already. We're gonna go ahead and uncheck use composition shutter and change that shutter angle up to 180. That's just gonna give the motion blur. The more you drag that up, the more motion blur it's gonna have and the less you drag it down, it, the less it's gonna have. So depending on how quick it is or whatever, you can tweak the settings to get exactly what you're liking. Let's go ahead and line up the keyframes so like it doesn't start instantly and it ends a little bit before the clip ends. That way you can kind of like 
see it from start to finish. Because if you have it like lasted the whole duration of the clip, it might look a little weird. So let's go ahead and easy ease these keyframes. And now we can see we have a really clean looking effect. Now this is the time where you can kind of get creative with it. And that's what I did inside the Motion Warp preset pack. I'll have the sample link down below. That way you can download it, see if you like the effects, and then also the full version. That way you can go ahead and see all of the different presets. I spent a bunch of time making different presets using warps and, and slides and, and rotates and a bunch of different stuff. So it doesn't only have the side to side or up down. It has like these barrel rolls and a bunch of really crazy stuff inside there. So if you like this style effect, I'd highly recommend checking out the full Motion Warp pack because it's a great tool to have it in your arsenal. I literally made this whole entire edit within like 15 minutes just using motion warp presets and also shake sauce. I'll have it linked down below. It works for normal horizontal footage and also short form content vertically. So it's like a really like a no brainer. I use it all the time. So as we can see, we have a super fire effect already. And I wanna show you how easy it is to add these motion warp presets on. Like I said, there's a sample version in the description as well as the full one. I'd highly recommend picking up that full one because it's just insane. But let's go ahead and use the slide left preset. So as you can see, when we drag it on, we have our keyframes and they're not lined up exactly how we want. So all we're gonna do is highlight them and drag them into place where we want it to start, where we want the middle to be, and then where we want the end to be. And then, just like that, that we have the effect that we just made with a little bit more sauce. I think it just looks a little cleaner with some of the more warps and other stuff on it. So you can really get creative making effects like this and add on different distort effects like CC lens, lens distortion, optics compensation, turbulence displaced wave warp. There's so many different effects that I use throughout the pack just to sauce it up and make it look a little bit better um, that I'd recommend you just play around with and spend time doing. Just to give you one more example of what's inside the motion warp pack, if you drag on an effect like spiral this that sauce and then kind of just tweak it how we did ever so slightly, just real quick, and then play it. You can see how we have this crazy whip transition. And these are pretty intensive on your computer. As you can see, if I go to full screen, it's going to take a second to reload. That's why I recommend editing in like a lower resolution. And then when you wanna like lock in the effect and make sure it's like actually taking place, just go ahead and put it on full so you can see if it's actually what you want. So you can see taking a second here, and we're gonna have the effect in just a second. And there we are, just a simple effect, just like that. So then you can see we kind of have a similar looking effect happening here, where Central C is rotoscoped out, and there's just the background doing this crazy distortion. And here, I'm, I'm not gonna go through and break down every single one, because they're kind of redundant, they're all kind of the same thing. It's motion tile, the transform effect, and then some kind of the distort effects, like optics compensation, CC lens, turbulence displace, a bunch of different distort effects just all in combination. And the ones that rotate like this are honestly just using transform and just like the rotation keyframe. So you just have to rotate it and line it back up. There's so much you can do with it. You can see you don't only have to do it on rotoscoped out layers too. You can just like add it as transitions like this. And I think it looks really clean. So let me play you the edit with just the motion warp and none of the shakes. So you can kind of visualize what that looks like. And then how I was able to go in and add more energy with like the shakes kind of like just to bring life to the edit. I'm not in a mood cause my flight delayed. So I jumped on a private jet and I'm asking a pilot at ETA. Lambo parked on a landing strip. Everyone in my gang and my DJ paid. Why is my man talking about inshallah? These times he don't even pray. Why is my man wearing a Jesus piece? How did she squeeze in them jeans? Big behind a petite waist. Take time with a GBG, we don't beef nobody like GBK. I'm not in Definitely has a lot more energy, but now adding on those shakes like this. I'm not in a mood cause my flight delayed. So I jumped on a private jet and I'm asking a pilot at ETA. Lambo parked on a landing strip, everyone in my gang and my DJ paid. Why is my man talking about inshallah? These times he don't even pray. Why is my man wearing a Jesus piece? How did she squeeze in them jeans? Big behind and petite waist. Take time with a GBG, we don't beef nobody like GB. I'm not in a crazy so the shakes are definitely next level with this so then double pressing on l you can expose the audio and you can see there's four beat hits here that i want to add shakes to so inside of shake sauce in the custom tab i'm going to go ahead and click this plus which is going to make the layers to apply a custom preset the version i'm showing you is still in beta so there might be a few minor bugs but by the time it's out it'll be all fixed so you can see it did two things here it allowed us to change the amplitude and frequency that way we get shake and then also made this effect over here with all of the values as well. So you can you can make the preset inside of shake sauce over here or inside of here. The UI just looks a little bit nicer, but at the moment, the slider values aren't intense enough for what I want here. So I'm actually just gonna change it over here and click the keyframe button and drag 
it up to like 250 and then bring that position frequency to like five. And then if we go back like one or two frames, I'm gonna change that value to zero and add a keyframe. And then we can go like five frames forward, one, two, three, four, five, change that value to zero. That way we have a little bit of a shake hit here. I'm also gonna go into the flicker and blur settings and change the flicker on and then keyframe the brightness here to like one, move backwards two frames, change it to zero, and then go forward like one or two, change it to zero. So now we have a nice hit here. And let's go ahead and easy ease them. And I'm gonna expose that audio again and then just copy and paste the keyframes. That way we don't have to completely remake it. But I, what I will do here is change the intensity. So instead of 250 on this first one, let's go ahead and make it 300 and then maybe make the brightness of the flicker up a little bit. So it gets in more intense with each beat hit. That way it kind of like builds up to something. So then just going through, instead of 300 this time, let's go ahead and make it 350 and then 1.5. And then lastly, copy and paste it to this last one and change it to 502. So now when we play this, you can see how there's a lot more energy. Now the crazy thing about this is we can go ahead and if we put our playhead where we want the shake to start, so this is where like the beat hit is. So we want the shake to start. We can go over here and click set center keyframes and then you can see it changed those keyframes to green. And now when we click the save button, we'll just name this central C and click save. When we go back into our presets and our keyframed, scroll to the bottom, we have central C. So let's go ahead and delete this and say we wanted to like add this throughout our video or just make it a preset to save later. All we have to do is go to central C, click on our layer and then click apply. It's going to do a few loading things. And as you can see, all of the values we just had are stored here. Run, run, pray, wise, my mom, a Jesus piece. And you can always go back in and edit that and change that later. So if it's not exactly what you want, you can go ahead and do that. But I just wanted to show you the workflow that I was using to add these shakes super, super easily. Unfortunately, like I said, Shake Sauce 2 isn't out at the moment. I'll have something linked down in the description to remind you when it does come out. Or if you're watching this a little bit later, chances are it might actually already be out. So go ahead and check that out in the description. And then when we add everything together, the motion warp, the shakes, it looks like this. I'm not in a mood, come on, flight there, lay. So I jumped on a private jet and I'm asking a pilot at ETA. Lambo parked on a landing strip, everyone in my gang and my DJ paid. Why is my man talking about inshallah? These times he don't even pray. Why is my man wearing a Jesus piece? How does she squeeze in them jeans? Big behind a petite waist. Take time with a GBG, we don't beef nobody like GB. If you made it to the end of the video and you're not subscribed, be sure to do so. I make videos like this all the time. Also, if you're interested in any of the editing packs or presets or plugins that I use in this video, I'll have them linked down below, as well as Creator Pass. It's my private community where I teach creators how to build and sell digital products. So that way they can make passive income while growing their personal brand. That's all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.